In this video, we're going to take a look uh, in a bit more depth at the uh, hanging man and the hammer candlestick pattern. Hello, I'm David Jones, and in this latest video with Trading 212, it's the next step along, it's the last bit uh, on candlestick patterns. Now, in recent weeks, we've done bullish and bearish engulfing. Uh, we've also done dark cloud cover and the piercing pattern last time around. So to wrap things off, I thought we'd look at a couple of um, other common patterns, that the hanging man pattern, and the hammer pattern. So as usual, let's take a look at the theory first of all. So as usual, let's take a look at the theory behind both of these approaches. So first of all, the hammer. So we've got a market that's dropping. Uh, let's assume these are daily candles. So we have three days in this example where the market's uh, sliding lower. Let's see what happens on the next day. So let's just talk through this first of all. It doesn't really matter, I think, the color of the body of the candlestick, whether the close is here or the close is there. Let's assume the market opened there and closed there. Um, but you can see what happened during the day. The market really did push lower. So it looked as if this, uh, this previous downtrend was continuing. But over the course of the day, the market reverses and manages to close quite a way off the lows. So this is the hammer. Let's think about the, the psychology that's going on here. So the market is pushing lower. We're seeing lower prices. People are happy to sell into that weakness, but at some point during the day, the buyers have stepped back in, lifted the market up. So we have this long shadow or wick on the candlestick and a relatively small body. So this is the hammer. It's so probably what happens on the next day is important as well. So let's just jump forward. So lots of things can happen the next day. Um, but what I've done here, I've assumed the market opens here, trades a bit lower, trades higher, but closes uh, up. The important thing is we haven't taken out the lows from the day before. So this is the hammer reversal pattern. So an aggressive trade here, for example, would be to be a buyer the next day, assuming the market has rejected these lower prices and could be getting ready to turn around and putting a stop loss below the low of that hammer candle. Because by definition, if the lows of the previous day get taken out, then that downtrend is still very much intact. So it's all about the psychology that's going on uh, during the day in that market where we see those lows rejected. Let's take a look at the hanging man. So we've got a market that's been trending higher. Again, the example I'm using, we've got daily candles, three days where the market's going higher. Let's see what happens next. So we have a day that looks like this. Let's assume the market opens here, closes up there. Um, or of course, if it opened there and closed down there, we'd have a dark candlestick. But during the course of the day, the market has pushed lower. Now we've seen the buyers come back in, but it's the fact that it's had this test lower can be a suggestion uh, that maybe this strength is running out of steam. Let's look at the next day. Okay, so we have a down day here. Again, I don't think the direction is that important, but a down day arguably adds to the, the, the feeling that there's negative sentiment coming back in. Again, the way to trade it, I would suggest, would be a stop loss um, over the top of that hammer pattern. Because by definition, if the market does that, uh, the hammer pattern, the hanging man pattern, sorry, is invalidated, okay? And it looks like the market's gonna push higher. I'm not as big of a fan as this, as I am of the pattern down here. This one here makes a lot more sense from a psychological point of view where the market has pushed lower, but during the course of the day, sentiment has turned around and the, the, the buyers have come back in. It's not as strong an argument with a hanging man, but you know, there are two, there are two patterns that are always covered together, which is why we're doing it this way for this video. So there's the theory. Um, let's take a look at some real world examples. And after that, I'll talk a bit more about the sort of things uh, that I look for. So let's take a look at a real market. What we're looking at here, this is, I thought we'd look at some hourly candles for a change. This is pound US dollar. Now this isn't a perfect example, but what we're looking at, um, unfortunately in the real world, it isn't perfect. So we're looking at 9th of Feb, this sort of timeline here. And you can see the market rallies up for three hours. So we see a move, pound US dollar, from about 139.20 up towards 139.90. So we've got a 70 point move in three hours. Then we have this candlestick here. Ideally, the body should be a little bit smaller, but you get the feeling for what, what we're looking at here. This is the hanging man, where the market trades lower during the hour period. We have quite a long shadow left, but the market does push back up. So again, the aggressive trade here, we'd be looking to sell, but with a stop loss either over the top of uh, this candle here, or ideally, I think, over the top of this one here. Let's see what happened next. So the market does end up reversing. Um, if, we were, if we went short on the open of the next candle, stop above here, stop above there, 
we'd still be in the trade and the market does end up uh, selling off quite heavily. So, so it worked well. It's not a perfect example, but it works well. There's another one back here that again, this is not quite perfect, um, but a similar sort of thing where the market pushes lower. I think that this is the better example because we do have the longer shadow. Back here, this example wouldn't have worked. You'd have had your stop above the high or that high there and you'd have been stopped out because the market pushed higher. But here's an example, good risk reward, the market sells off. So it ended up being a fairly painless trade to do. So let's take a look at the, the hammer. So this is the price of gold. So this is gold uh, coming into February. So the market has come off from about $1,350 an ounce, uh, traded as low, it's about 1327. And of course, it's this one here, this is an hourly candle. So what we're looking at here, Again, it's not perfect. Um, we should have uh, arguably a smaller body, but the psychological setup you can see is there. The market has sold off really hard over the last couple of hours, uh, pushed down towards 1327. But during the course, we've seen a turnaround and the market's pushed back up. Um, so arguably leaving this uh, hammer pattern. Now, one way of trading this is to wait and see what happens over the next hour. So over the next hour, we don't want to see that low taken out. That's maybe the patient way of doing this. Let's just jump forward an hour. Okay, so we have a fairly quiet hour next. Arguably, we've also got, for fans of chan uh, candle patterns, something of a, a, a bottom forming here where we've hit the same level twice. We haven't taken out the lows. So there's, there's more weight to the trade here. So again, if we're a buyer, we're a buyer at wherever the market was trading at the end of that hour, 13.30 an ounce, stop losses below those lows, because those lows get taken out, the pattern is invalidated. Let's jump forward in time. So the market does chop around for a good, what, 10 hours, I suppose, or so. So there's plenty of um, I think time to get in on the trade, that level still wasn't threatened, and then eventually the market does start moving. So it's not really predictive, you know, there was no way of knowing the market was gonna bounce $20 off this level. But um, in terms of risk reward and signifying where to place the stop, I think that's probably the best use of these sort of patterns. So a couple of examples there on shorter term charts. I think, like I said, that the, the hammer makes more sense because the market has sold off pretty hard, but we have seen a reversal during the day. Um, so, so for my money, it's a better uh, setup than just the hanging man. I think the problem with all of this stuff, you can spend so much time looking at MACD, stochastics, RSIs, candlesticks, support resistance trends, that by the time you've done your work, it's the end of the week and the market's closed, so you can't place a trade. So I think it's important to try and boil it down to a few simple approaches. So for me, the sort of thing I look, like, look for with candlestick charts is uh, the hammer pattern at the market uh, bottom and this bullish and bearish engulfing pattern. I think there are a couple of things that I want to look for. They tend to be pretty uh, easy to spot, uh, so I don't need to spend ages just going through charts and taking a look. We'll wrap things up there. As usual, if you have uh, any questions or comments, leave us a message in the comments down below. We do read all of them. Uh, if you like the video, click on the thumbs up. And to never miss out on the various videos we produce, and there's a whole load that we uh, do during the week on trading strategies, market jargon, uh, cryptocurrencies, euro, oil, gold, click on the subscribe button there and to never miss out, to get notified every time, just make sure that alarm bell icon down there is clicked and you'll be notified every time a new video gets uploaded. But for this week from me, David Jones and Trading 2 on 2, we'll leave it there and I hope you have a good trading week.